Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to have Flipstep and Lori on Ravaged. One of my favorite maps. And let's go over it briefly as usual. Oh, it is a very StarCraft-like map, because it is, in fact, a StarCraft map. Zelnaga Caverns, to be precise. StarCraft 2, to be precise. Basically the same idea, although... Yeah, you have the main expansion here, or main base here. Four plus 1.8s, which is actually fairly heavy. Compared to the normal 3 plus 2s, you end up getting about plus 7.5 rather than the normal plus 6. A little bit more economy available, and the wind is quite nice. If you get up here, your wind is 0.8 to 2.5. That is worthwhile to go full-on wind. Worst case scenario, it is as cost-effective as solar. And apart from that, you have your... Right next to the main base, you have another expansion, north and south. Not quite symmetric, very close though. And then there's a lower expansion, which is typically what's gone for next. That or the center. And then oftentimes players will try to go surreptitiously forward the expansions over to the west and to the east. Usually surreptitiously, you don't usually see players trying to do this in a way that's obvious. Because while these aren't the least defensible expansions, they... Well, they have a few more entry points than some of the others. This is actually probably the least defensible expansion overall to the southeast and northwest in the pit. You can just go around the top here in this ridge. So this area is fairly defensible, but you usually see players try to hide taking it. But they're very obvious about taking the center. They're obvious about taking this south area. Players will, however, try to harass along this ridge, going around back, taking out these mexes from behind. Getting to the main base is very difficult, though. This is a map where you cannot attack the main base unless you've already won. Or you're going for some gunship rush cheese, which hasn't happened in a long time, come to think of it. None of the games I've cast, at least. No tournament game that I've seen. And usually you see Blastwing Cheese at least once in a tournament if it's going to come up. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Flipstep going for Kalinkabud Factory, southwest side of the map. Lowry going for Light Vehicles on the northeast side of the map. And that's another thing I like about this map. This map is very good for all factories. It's flat enough for vehicles to work fairly well, though terraforming can put a damper in that pretty effectively. Bots, it's hilly enough for them to work fairly well. There's enough room to get around and avoid the fact that vehicles are getting around quickly. Spiders and Jumpy, where they have cliffs, so it's pretty obvious. Air Start, well, you have a very defensible opening area, so an Air Start is quite powerful. It's viable, at least. And... Amphib is a bot. And actually, you can use Sea as well if you really want to. I have seen players do this. It is a cheese strategy, but you can build a sea shipyard in one of these pools over here, and then run things along the edge of the map, like run some light ships along the edge of the map, and come along to the other side. You pretty much can only do this with... I guess Crusaders? That seems the only unit I could think of offhand that would even have the range to hit up here. Yeah. Enforcers, maybe. Something expensive like that. Or build a Strider. Build a C Strider like a Reef or a Warlord. No, not a Reef. A Reef won't fit. Actually, a Warlord, Warlord wouldn't fit in this area either. Yeah, I'm not sure what you'd use. Anyway. Flipstip. Flips to worried about Wolverines coming in. Right now, though, Lodi is focusing on Slashers, being very defensive, trying to take this north, the, not the north, the main, trying to secure their main as best as possible. While Flipstep having gone cloaky, they're probably going to expand quickly, and indeed they are, and where are they going? Okay, they're sending in a nice scouting gremlin. Hooray! Haven't seen this in a while. I've been forgetting to use them myself, but very useful nonetheless. Scouting gremlins are awesome. That is one of the best things the Cloaky Bot Factory has going for it is free scouting. Now, on the other hand, Flipstep is not actually expanding that much. Both players are about even for economy, though. Actually, Flipstep, they're there. They're expanding now. As is Lori, the Lori is slightly ahead in the expansion game. They, however, are not particularly ahead in the worker game, and Flipstep is not producing at all. They're focusing entirely on getting their expansions up quickly. Very much a gamble. They are gambling on not being attacked, because they have... They have no army. They have their commander, which has been morphed, and is called Cheese. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's a little suggestive. Certainly makes me think there's something up. But yeah, it's, that metal value there is the gremlin plus the commander. Maybe. Oh, and this gremlin, is, a, is it going to get spotted? Oh, that was too close. I think Lodri... I think Lodri is either... No, Lodri is just going for a harassment path. They might have been wise for checking for the gremlin, and they just about spotted too. And it's flipstep. Are they going to see that? Is that gremlin going to be properly controlled? Because there is a dart right here. Okay, it does see the dart, but 
Nice. Avoids de getting decloaked by the dark. Gets away from the ramp too because it needs to avoid that. But unfortunately cannot see if something's going to come down to decloak it. Nothing is going to come down, but Flipstip not able to get on the ridge as they would most assuredly love to do. They can't really safely do it. I really wish I could see the decloak radius on the tools. They just, there was a thing I could press to show the decloak radius. I don't think they... Oh, they can't get in between. There's going to be a Scorcher right here. You're going to try to get in between, but Flipstep sees there is no way for that Gremlin to get in between. They cannot get up there. At this point, Scorcher coming around the south side as well, but Flipstep already prepared with the Zeus, stopping that Scorcher, although it's still, well, sort of prepared. I mean, ultimately, not really. And those, wow, those metal extractors going down in a hurry. Wonderful harassment. That Scorcher paid for itself two times over. That was extremely well done. And Lord at the same time taking the center, taking the north, well, they're taking the north. They're not taking the northwest, though. They are also not taking the west. They are scouting that out, making sure that the west and east are accounted for. As Flipstep will find the east side of the map, if they build static defense, if they build a lotus, they might be able to stop this dart. It'll give it away, but they're not building it first, they are building it last. So this particular conjurer is dead. And this gremlin now has a chance to get in. I don't know if Flipstep is aware of this. No, I don't think Flipstep is aware of this. They are not aware of this at all. If they check again, they will be pleasantly surprised. Except for the fact that they'll be unpleasantly surprised about all the units coming down. Still, Flipstep is in a pretty good position. They have been... They're setting up with very slow units. They're basically focusing on having the units in the right spot at the right time. They do have a lot of radar. Which would make sense. Though, Lodi is even beating them on that. But yeah, they need that radar. I'd suggest building a radar on this hill here, too. But I think they have a decent amount. Yeah, they have one radar over... Is this radar module? Yeah, it is. Okay, the commander's a radar. And they also have a radar in their base, right here. On the other hand, Lori is... Are they doing the commander radar thing, too? Nope. They have built a radar, surprisingly, at the bottom. I don't know why they didn't build it on the cliff. That makes little sense. But at any rate, Lori is aware of what's going on there. I think they're trying to force Flipstep out of the choke points. Just because, at this point, Flipstep, they have the Zeus and they have the Rockos, but... If they're in the choke point, it works out well for them, because Flipstep will approach and their units don't have to move very much. But that's not the case anymore, and these Scorchers, they're going to get rid of the Zeus, no problem. I think that is about it for Flipstep's offensive force. I mean, Flipstep has been running a very lean offensive game this game. All game, they've been trying to just get away with static defense a little bit. They've been trying to get away with having the units in the right spot at the right time, having type counters. They have not been focusing on having a large number of units, where Lori has been producing constantly. I should point out that, yeah, there we go. Lori has been producing constantly... Flipstep did drop production early on in the game to try to eke out more economy. But, once again, more sneaky play, play from Flipstep. They're taking full advantage of the Kaligabot factory. Well, almost full advantage. I see no ticks yet. Unfortunately, that was taking advantage of them because I see no ticks, which will be kind of handy. I see no snipers, which would be priceless against this here. The Dominatrix, that would go down to a sharpshooter in a hurry. Unfortunately, that is not the case. And the Dominatrix able to get a bunch of free units in... Zeus is going to get killed by the... Is it going to get killed by the warrior? I think it won't, actually. No, it will. It goes down. Still a bit of a waste, though. Unable to get the Dominatrix, and the Dominatrix able to get the warrior. So that gets turned back against Flips... I mean, Lodri with the Dominatrix. That is where you want a sharpshooter, and Flipstep... They are <laughs> getting five! Because why just get one? Scythe getting away from the north side of the map needs to do this carefully, which it is. I mean, Flipstep has been relatively careful, other than losing the gremlin right here. They lost that apparently a while ago. And the eastern side of the map taken by Lodri, the western side of the map will be broken, well, the scouting will be taken away by Flipstip, but even then, Flipstip has no way to follow up on that. They have no way to build it. They're trying to go for an air switch, but they have plus 20 metal, compared to Lodri's plus 35. Yeah, Lodri has most of the map here. Flipstip has this in the bottom left corner. That's about it. They lost the center. They lost... They never even took the southeast here. They're just now taking it. They never managed to take the north, the center east. They're... Tr I mean, they're raiding pretty well. Although the scythe probably should go over here to the northwest. I'm oh, sorry, northwest. The northeast. I probably should just go over here. Take this expansion out. I'm sure they could do it. Take the defender out first, and then everything else will just fall. And there are the sharpshooters. Finally get one with the Dominatrix. Flipstep, I don't think, can see them. Oh, no, they can, actually. 
They can see them, they can't hit them. They're not quite close enough yet. And the Dominatrix gets out of radar range. I mean, the commander has retreated. Remember, Flipsip's commander is one of their main sources of radar. They do not have radar in the field. They do not have radar on this cliff, which would be extremely useful. But unfortunately, they do not have it. And the scythe has been retreated. A little surprising there, but yes, it has been pulled back home. Lotus forced to build a few more lotuses to try to deal with that, but at this point, it does not matter. They have a massive advantage in both economy and military. Like, double the economy, three times military in terms of cost. And, yeah, I totally believe it. Not to mention, how many dominatrices do they... Five dominatrices! Yeah, Lotus is, at this point, pretty much already winning the game. The sharpshooters will help a lot. Although, it looks like there's only, ultimately, two of them. But still, if they're able to get into the range of the Dominatrix, I mean, if they... Getting rid of defenders here and there, not terrible, but it is giving away the positions of the Sharpshooters. If they get spotted, that is going to be a major blow. I think Flipstep would call it then and there. If those Sharpshooters were taken, I totally, like, I would not blame Flipstep if they just threw in the towel if those Sharpshooters got hit by the Dominatrix. Whether or not that happens, I have no idea, but at this point, Flipstep has been largely destroying their own assets. Like, their own dominated assets. More than they have been able to take... Bug. What are they talking about? Well, anyway. A little bit of an odd thing there. Pointing out a bug apparently to do with the radar, if the message is to be believed. And the sharpshooter does get spotted out. It does get dominated, or will likely get dominated. Not, surprisingly, not attacking the dominator. I'll admit, there's so many dominators, it's not going to matter. But, yeah, getting self-destructed because that's all that can be done. I mean, it was that, or they have to fight their own. That would be... Fighting their own sharpshooter would have been a pain in the butt. I totally understand that, and that was the right choice. There are a few times in this game where self-destructing units is a good idea. That was one of them, and there it goes. Finally fires. I'm surprised I didn't shoot for earlier, but yeah, that was that was bizarre. Anyway, there are a few times in the game where it's a good idea to destroy your own units. A sharpshooter getting dominated is one of them. Although, admittedly, a sharpshooter getting, getting dominated probably means an earlier error, but frankly... Dominatrix play has been quite good, and no, the sharpshooters... Okay, there we go. The Dominatrices have finally been removed from play. All of them dead, so far. There may be more in future. Hopefully, that for Flipstep, that doesn't happen, but frankly, I don't know how much chance Flipstep has. I mean, Flipstep losing their south expansion. They're... Oh, they still have this expansion over here, but they're, they are way behind in military. Relatively behind in economy. And... Was that a tick? Yes, that... Oh, I think that was a tick. That looks like a tick explosion. Yeah, it looks like that was a tick explosion. So yes, they are taking advantage of the whole Kalukibai factory. That is good to see. Many options. Use them. The thing about Kalukibai factory is kind of a skill gate factory. Like, familiar with the idea of a skill gate character in a fighting game where new players can use them and get a lot of mileage, but then you get moderately good and everyone else knows just how to beat them. And then at the high level, it turns out there's all these tricks that you have to use in order to be good with them, and actually being good with them is fairly difficult. Look about factories like that. They are a very straightforward set of basic units. The warrior, the well, glaive primarily. Glaive, rock, rock a warrior. That is very archetypal counter structure. It's very obvious what's useful against what. And warriors are half assault anyway, so trying to attack with that is great. But then once you get to the point where your opponent realizes, oh hey, your units are quite weak. I can just barrel through them with stronger units, with shield bots and vehicles. Then it becomes a matter of knowing how to use ticks and sharpshooters and hammers to get rid of heavy entrenched defenses. Although, even light entrenched defenses is not a bad idea, but warriors can work against light entrenched defenses. And using Zeus to basically more as a force multiplier than anything. Both Zeus and tick are great force multipliers. Although Zeus is more of a tank than a force multiplier, but it works for both. And you have to know how to use all the tools. And knowing how to use all the tools becomes really difficult. But Flipstep... They are a top player, so they know how to use all the tools. And I'm glad to see them use all the tools. I mean, well done to Lori, but that was a very... That was well played. It's just... I think the big thing was Flipstep really gambled on early economy. They gambled on not having much military. They gambled on basically sneaky tactics to get back into the game, and it didn't pay off. And that gremlin... Like, oh man. Lori blocking the gremlin. I'm pretty sure... What? No, actually... Oh, wow. I expected... Maybe it was earlier. I was thinking that the factory here probably had a rally point over the ramp. And that most likely was the case because if you put the rally point here and you have the defender here, gremlins cannot move up the ramp. They will be detected and they will be killed. So unless your units have moved out, 
in that one moment when your units have moved out, your opponent could rise, could send a gremlin up, could actually get in. But that's a rare moment. At any rate, yeah, Flipsip couldn't get that in. Couldn't really do much with the scythe. Couldn't easily win with the type counter with the Zeus. I think they were trying to force a conflict in one of the choke points. The Zeus and Rockos would have a good time. Unfortunately, they weren't able to do that, so that left them out. And they were out in the open at that point. They are not going to work out because the vehicles have much better movement. I think earlier ticks would have been very handy. Like If they were trying to force that choke point battle, having some ticks set up in advance, that would have made it perfect. Although, admittedly, at that point, Glaze would have been a better option for that. Glaze are usually a better option. That's the one thing about Caligabi Factory. Glaze are often a better option. Not always. There are many situations where they're not. But when you're dealing with force multiplication, Glaives turn to work out really well because of their fire rate and high speed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.